Hi everybody, uh, I'm back again uh, with Ketchum for our daily briefing from Cannes and since last night saw the presentation of the Gold Lions for both PR and Influencer, we're going to be focusing on the creative work uh, that we've been seeing during the week. And here to provide some expert commentary is Indy Selvaraja, uh, Creative Director UK, Chief, what do we Creative. Call? Chief Creative Officer uh, for Ketchum. It's a, it's a title in London. For the word creative in, which is amazing. Based in London, right? Based in London. Based in London, which is where all the creativity is. So um, the big news, I guess, from, from a PR industry point of view is that for the first time, a PR agency was credited as the lead creative agency on both the PR winner and the influencer winner. And after a decade of complaining that all of the PR lines go to advertising agencies, I suddenly have nothing left to complain about. Um, but let, let's, let's start by asking what does that mean for the PR industry? Does it mean anything? Mm. I think I, I, it's a really good point. And being in PR and in a PR agency, it's interesting, actually, the first point is many of the people who have now left that agencies and are now ECDs and CCOs uh, in PR agencies have made that transition. Sort of made that transition in the last, you know, five, six years. So relatively new, you know, in terms of what creative departments do in PR agencies right. and the structure and how they work. And it's an ongoing conversation we, we all have internally, you know, the role. And so it's interesting for that reason in that I think it's, I think it's great. I think it's a, it's a real marker in the sand and, and long it may continue. But also I think what's great is it shows the transferable skills that are happening into what are traditional PR shops. You know, you think of going from the kitchen, you think of what Edelman has been there to all of their head, but Weber. So I think it's great. And, and I think it will also help those individuals that you're trying to bring into your organization who might be from creative backgrounds rather than more traditional. Yeah. So, so I think for that reason, it's a great thing. And I think it's also, you know, um, a really good point that, well, we'll come on to that in a minute, but the work itself, I think there's a big thing for me about humor. And I think within PR, and I'm really pleased to see something. Whether, whether I agree with the campaign, whether I like this, there's certain things I'm not quite sure about. There's certain things I can do. The fact that it's based on humour and it's based on levity, right. I think is a big, is a big deal. No, the, the, one of the things that stood out for me, and I want to talk about it later, um, or maybe we'll do it now, um, was that these weren't sort of campaigns with purpose at the center they were campaigns that made the brand the hero yeah. and they were just smart clever product marketing campaigns mm -hmm. um have we are we moving away from purpose uh, or are we just expanding beyond purpose i, I think it's expanding and i think i think you could look at that as a purpose campaign in some ways for what it was for you know, and actually the actual the, the solutionary tool. This is the spec savers. The spec savers, the spec savers offer for people, you know, with the hearing test, etc. cetera, that, that need to have it. And then further down the line, if you need to, you know, have, have some kind of tool to help you. But I think it's expansion. I think expansion is a good thing rather than it's this or this. It, it can be both. Um, and and I, I think that, that's a great thing. And But the purpose side, you know, there, there's always going to be a place for it. I think a few years ago it was big thing it was charities and it was and right. I think and, and I always think it's great to see winners across all the shows that aren't necessarily just charitable foundations and charities. I, I, I think I think it I think it helps with its, its brands. You know? Right. So tell me a little bit about what, what you think the judges saw in Golan's work for Spec Savers that elevated it to gold. It had already won a, a Grand Prix. To yeah. Grand Prix. Yeah. Uh, it had already won a Grand Prix in audio. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be one of the big talked about campaigns yeah. now at, the, uh, at this year's event. Um, tell me a little bit about what you think the judges loved about it. 
Yeah. And tell me a little bit about your personal reaction. Well, it's interesting because this is where I find it quite interesting because this is obviously an international show, biggest international show. And I always felt, and, and I, I, I've been judging other things this year, where, where it's been there. Um, but it's also performed incredibly well on this one, the show. But it's also very culturally specific. So, so mm. what I mean is, when, yeah. when, when I've been looking at it, it's, it's as, a, as a British person, everyone goes, oh yes, of course. Yeah, it's so specific. From a, from a kind of a, a UK well, it, It's also almost generationally specific as well, I right? So. I, I mean, Rick so Astley. Well. But I think also what Rick Astley's done is just him, it was a, it was a good choice, a great choice. Obviously, it, it will work. The insight into the track, him. But if you notice, the last 10 years, he's been doing gigs and concerts where he's been turning up at like Tea in the Park, which is like Gen Z. So, so he's got this interesting cross generational appeal. But you said that it's rooted in very much a generational kind of, you know, that's when he did release his song, right, that's when right. he put it in the 80s. Um, but I think, as a, I think because it feels culturally significant now, even though it did also in the 80s, there's a whole audience right. that understands. But I also think it's all, you know, ultimately looking at it, it's just a really clever idea as well. Yeah. And one of the things that's interesting, we talked about it a little bit, is we'd both seen it in other, in other competitions. I'd yep. seen it in the Amir Sabre Awards earlier this year, and it did win uh, in its yep. category in Sabre. Um, but it wasn't one of the campaigns that everybody pointed to and said that should be yep. best in show. And I think it tells you something about the subne subjective nature of judging yep. and maybe the, the sort of group psychology of judging. Yeah. Um, that when something sort of picks up momentum in a in a jury room, it can steamroll everything in front of it. And, totally. uh, and I think that's you, you judged, you've yeah. seen it as well. Yeah, right? totally. and, and I've seen it in this year in, in rooms where you know it didn't it didn't move forward. Um, it's really, it's super. That's one of the biggest things we all talk about in the industry is judging panels and juries and how one can influence other people suddenly. It can be a, a sort of a herd mentality, whereas it can be quite disparate in certain rooms. And then suddenly, oh, one, and then you go to bed that day and come out the next day and see it completely differently, right. which I think is good. Right. I think that's a great thing about judging. You should go into judging very open-minded um, and, and almost leave the baggage. You know, almost leave the baggage. Well, it didn't really pick up anything this year much. Right. And now suddenly it's. So I think. Oh sure, we would never say, well, it won, oh. it won in another awards competition, so we have to put exactly. elevate it. Exactly. Right? But you're aware of it, yeah. As, as, yeah. as someone in the industry, so. Um, but it can be that totally. I, I think it's it totally shows how it can be physical influence and how you, know, you can change your mind. What about the what about the Sarah V campaign with Michael Sarah that won um, the influencer category? Yeah. Um, what was your reaction to that? I mean, I, mean, I really like another it. celebrity campaign. Another celebrity campaign. I, I, I really like it. Because firstly, just the, the wacky, bizarre concept that someone just landed on this thing and, and they've gone with it. I think I like that everyone's gone with it, pushed behind it. You know, obviously him, everyone else behind it. But it, it's also um, a brilliant 360 campaign. You know, when you think of every component you need in a campaign, I mean, clearly there's a big spend behind it. You know, definitely there'll be huge spend behind it. him, but what he's doing. Right. It's, it's hitting every kind of platform. <laughs> I mean, to a certain extent, not to a certain extent, to a huge extent, it's incredibly exciting that that kind of money is being spent on PR, oh, on PR. right? Exactly. And, and this was a campaign where the actual Super Bowl ad, this wasn't, this wasn't PR for a Super Bowl ad. Exactly. This was a Super Bowl ad that was just the capper on a yeah. great PR campaign. Yeah. And that's the same in some ways for the Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg was yeah. a good example, you know, for Smoke. It's, it's, a way, it's again, it's... it's they're, they're fundamentally PR campaigns, and there is big spend. That's good as well. Yeah. Normally, yeah. you're doing something on a shoestring, you know, or, or, or as you said, you. you know, I think I had this conversation with people you guys about, you know, before about PR agencies amplifying other people's work, which I have a, oh. a big, um, yeah, a big sort of issue with as well. But we're well, not an issue. But it, I think there's more to it than that. I think we've moved on, right. and it can be that. Right. But it can also be... And the, 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 the great thing about this, and I talked to Jim a little bit about this yesterday and voiced my concern, is that maybe now, finally, when people use the phrase creative agency, it will include, you know, Golden and 
and Ketchum <laughs> and, yeah. and not just the big ad brands. Tell me, tell me quickly what you loved that didn't win a Grand Prix. There's one campaign, but there's a few, but there's one campaign called Sweetheart Situationists. You know, when it's very, very briefly, it's um, Sweethearts are a candy brand. Oh, sure. Like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they've been around for 120 years in America. Virgin gives it to you when you're landing when you're, right, to okay. suck on and right. your ears, so don't, pop. ears don't pop. Yeah. And they've been around for 120 years. Gen Z are not buying them. So what they did, and I love this, they took all the discarded um, sweethearts, which were like either fuzzy or misprinted, or you can see, and they call them sweetheart situationships based on Gen Z relationships they have today. So they're, they're no longer kind of, they're all just fuzzy and they're fluid and they're not. And they, they put them in boxes, limited edition boxes, so discarded sweets, and they sold out within two weeks. And it's, I love I love it in every way. It, it was beautifully packaged, but you're using discarded product and, and literally giving them another life and currency. And the other thing that's lovely is they became limited edition, but also people had to wait for the new limited editions because you had to wait for the discarded. So there's a lovely play there with if there's less discarded because the quality of the sweet is good, you've got to wait longer for the limited edition. So it becomes even more, uh, you know, something um, desirable. Uh, I think I think it won. It did win in PR. I think it won, it won a gold. Yeah. Um, and I think it got bronze somewhere else. But it's just painfully simple. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I love about it. And also it's crafted. It's got a lovely craft and feel. The only other one was translated, which I really liked, which was Bank America, which was um, the first banking app for people uh, speaking with um, native Spanish. Because the children were basically having to go to the banks with, with the parents and translate. Oh, right. No, I've seen that and campaign in other awards. Um, that, oh, that, that did really well in Sabre in, in North America. Solution, um, and also the jeopardy of if I'm a child and with my parent and it's in a school, for example. Yes, if I'm you know, doing transactions in a shop, but the jeopardy of banking gets something wrong, which can have knock on effect. So, so they, they pinpointed, you know, the point where you need this translator the most right. is the banking, right. the finance, the mortgages, but you know, all those. And that was, again, just beautiful. And, and, and they basically did, they also made films. So they made these little short documentaries about each of these children for film festivals. So you had that lovely 360, felt like a big campaign. Ultimately, it's this very small little tool that you use. Overall quality of the work this year? I think, I think the work's really good. I think the one thing I'm seeing at the beginning, which I love, is the craft. And I think, you know, everyone knows that, you know, when I talk about the work that we do at Ketchum, craft is a massive element. I've always push the craft. And I think we're now starting to see some, some real craft coming into PR. No, there's always mm -hmm. been elements, but I think now you can see there's a real movement towards this has to look beautiful, it has to feel beautiful, it's got to have you know, a human touch to it that's been made in some way. So that's the biggest thing. The work is always great and the work is, work is always interesting. The, the winners, I think, there's a lot, I think there's a lot of debate this year. Mm -hmm. lot, some years you just go, that, that's a goal. That's a, this year, definitely the conversations are interesting. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. Folks, a bit of conversation. We agree, we disagree, or we sit on the fence. And so, but all, overall, I think in that category, particularly in the PR, I think it's now starting to blend this way, which I'm very happy to see. Great. Okay, thank you very much, Indy. Um, glad you're enjoying the, the work as much as I am. And we will be back tomorrow to wrap up this week in Cannes. Thank you again to our friends at Ketchum. Thank you, Indy. Thank 